it's another TI-99 slash 4A video. Or is it? No, it's not. It's TI-99 sim running on a Raspberry Pi 3 under Raspbian. Raspbian? Raspbian? Whatever you want to call it. I call it Raspbian. I think that's correct. It was a little difficult to set up. This is for my son uh, and my PI99 slash 4A project. We put a, a, a Raspberry Pi 3 inside of a non-functional TI99 slash 4A to use as a case. And this is the, the uh, emulation finally working. Finally. <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not a Linux guy, so it was a little difficult for me to get this up and running. Uh, command lines, ugh. You know, CP, the directory, blah. I respect you people who really know all that stuff, but for me, yikes. But I powered through it. So when you install it, it wants to stick everything into this folder and you'll get your ROMs and your disks and your cartridges. Um, just a little word of warning, it requires these very specific CTG cartridge files, um, which there is a conversion utility that comes with um, TI-99 SIM, uh, but I found it to be very difficult to get anything to come out of it that was worthwhile uh, using the Raspberry Pi and, <coughs> and Raspbian. So I don't know if that's just an issue or problem or if I wasn't doing it right. But um, eventually I tracked down pre-made files. <coughs> um, I couldn't you or maybe it was a problem of just things that I had that were stored on the Macintosh originally. Maybe the Mac does something to the... Uh, to the files and makes them unpalatable for the converter. I have no idea, but uh, I couldn't get anything that would work. So eventually I had to just track down pre-existing files and that, that solved the problem. Now it um, <clears throat> gives you a nifty little uh, folder for cartridges, but that turns out to be unnecessary. And, and also this is buried deep in your, in your, in your operating system folders, into your in your forbidden folders where you have to sudo everything in to move it in and out, and it's just sort of a pain. So you don't need to put the cartridge files in there uh, under Raspbian. It they work just fine <clears throat> sitting on your desktop or stored wherever you want. And the way you would normally launch them is just going into the uh, the terminal and typing something like. Um, well, not something like, but ti99 sim dash uh, sdl, not a Linux guy, and then uh, dash f for full screen or dash 4 for 2x mode, and there's lots of little commands like this, all kinds of little things like an NTSC emulation mode and all kinds of fun little things. And then you would type in the cartridge that you wanted to load. Like every time you wanted to load a cartridge, you have to know its exact name and the capitalization of it. And it's, yeah. <laughs> For a dyslexic non-Linux guy, that's not too fun. So, but I did find a better way for us non-commanding line people. Um, apparently, you can just um, use this groovy little open with under Raspbian, and you can put those command lines in once. Execute in terminal emulator. Uh, what in the heck is that? Excuse me for just a second. I have no idea what that sound was. That was very bizarre. Anyway, 
Um, you can even set it for the default, default uh, action for this file type so that when you double click, that's what happens. Um, and uh, hit OK, and that sets it as an option for launching these files. Very groovy. So say, for example, for uh, I have several set up, made a resolution, 2x, and this is my full screen version. So bubble, alpiner. <laughs> Simulation is working. Isn't that groovy? Upward and upward. Oh no, a snake! Oh my gosh! Ow! Oh, that snake is horrible. Oh no! Oh no, another snake! Ah! Why do I keep touching the snakes? Such a. Um, escape to pop out of there. So some other classics. Here's the 2x mode. Get a, a windowed mode. Very groovy. Burger time. Everybody's going to have a little burger time. Who doesn't love sentient pickles and processed meats? Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> all the classes. Oh, and these these files these have also have to be the CTG format, and also very difficult to convert my pre-existing cartridge collection, my ROM collection, based on the you know the ROMs that I have. I have tons and tons of ROMs, so I put together this nice collection of ROMs I already had. Uh, or um, cartridges I already had, but none of those ROMs, I couldn't get them to convert, no matter what I did. Unzipped them, did all kinds of different things, could not get the conversion tool to do anything with my files. So uh, I acquired new versions that were all pre-made CTGs. So that's probably what most people will have to do, I would think. So anyway, that's it working. And oh, uh, also got... Um, a version of extended basic going on. Oh, well, that's the original res. Let me get them on full screen. Because, you know, full screen. That's where it's at. Yes, extended basic working. 10. Root. It did it. It worked. Um, the only thing that I've come across that doesn't seem to be running perfectly smoothly, smoothly on a on the Raspberry Pi three is uh, Parsec, and um, it doesn't really seem to make sense to me. Um, even in its original in a native resolution, um, the lasers don't seem to fire correctly. Um, ships run fast. Everything seems... I mean, there's nothing wrong with the ship movement, but uh, and the, uh, the enemies come out properly, but about every four or five times I try to fire the laser, it doesn't, doesn't work. So I might try disabling speech emulation because when I when I first uh, installed this, I did notice um, under Raspbian and on the Raspberry Pi 3 that games that used speech emulation, the sound was garbled uh, at 1080p, which is one of the reasons I dropped it down to 720. So, uh, but at 720, everything seems to be running smoothly. But maybe Parsec is the canary in the coal mine. Maybe it's just the you know the uh, the tippy top of what uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 and uh, TI 99 SIM can do under uh, under the those conditions. So 
the uh, TI-99 SIM under Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi, um, Raspberry Pi 3 in the groovy PI-99 slash 4A case. All right, well, thanks for watching.